Hi everybody, it's time for me to do my first wrap up of 2020. So many amazing books to tell you about, I cannot wait to get started. So let's get going. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy middle of the week. I hope your guys' work week has been going well and that you are sliding into a fantastic weekend. The weather's been rather unpredictable up here. Rain, then sort of warm and pretty, and then cold. So yeah, no, and I've just been working my butt off. That is all I have been doing is working, working, working. So there you go. Um, last year I did these videos called my read and reviewed videos and I did a lot of them because I was trying to review books in sets of three. And I think what I wound up figuring out is that it was too much of the same type of content over and over and over again. And it just wasn't really engaging everybody the way that I wanted it to. So today I'm going to be starting my 2020 wrap ups. Now I'm going to be doing them a little differently. I'm not gonna do them sort of month to month. What I'm gonna do them is sort of when I get enough books together that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys a wrapped up. So this is number one for 2020. So as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However you keep track of your TBR, because I have some books to share with you. And if you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore and or if you are a library reader, please feel free to get your library to get them for you as soon as possible. Now, the first three books I've actually talked about in other videos, sort of just how this month has worked out. Um, but that doesn't mean I did not want to mention them in a wrap up. The first one I want to talk about is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This came out this month, January um, I want to say the middle of the month uh, from January 2020 from Putnam. Um, I read it actually in its um, in an ARC form that I got at Book Expo 2020. No, 2019. I've been having such a hard time with the years. Yeah, such a hard time. Um, I actually got to see Kylie Reed speak with my friend, Ryan Ludman, over at this charming rant. I also was there with Sarah of Hardcover Hearts, and also um, I got to see Sue. Hi, Sue. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, so it was a really lovely evening. She was fantastic. She was hilarious at times. She was also very thought-provoking and had a lot of really um, engaging things to say about her novel. So loved her. She is on tour. If you guys get a chance, please see Kylie Reed. Now, Such a Fun Age is the story of a young woman, a young black woman in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who works as a babysitter slash nanny for a sort of well-to-do white couple. One, at the very start of the book, what happens is she um, gets a call from the mother and saying that something has gone on and asking her late at night to come over and take their oldest daughter out of the house to get her away of the event that has occurred. You will find out what it is. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. What she does is she takes this young little girl who she has a very deep connection with, one of my favorite parts of the book, um, to a local grocery store where she is then accused by a security guard of stealing the child. Then what happens is the father comes, it turns out to be this ordeal, but our main character really just wants to walk away from it. But it turns out that there is a gentleman there that caught the whole incident on videotape um, and everything sort of spiles from there. There is another main character. Her name is um, Alex. I, did I say the main character's main name? I don't think I did. Um, Amira. Amira. E-M-I-R-A. Amira. Um, I really loved her. I could talk about her for ages. And she Let's go back. The other main character is Alex. She is the um, employer of Amira. And Alex is um, a social media person and she sort of runs this business. She has moved from New York to Pittsburgh after having her second child. And she's sort of trying to figure out who she is. Now, Amira is a recent college graduate, also sort of trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life, struggling with that time period after a lot of us have gone through where we graduate from college and where do we go? How do we make a living? How do we sort of set up what's going to be the next part of our life? And all of this becomes sort of this dynamic. There is sort of this discussion regarding Alex wanting to step in and sort of 
fix the situation. There's Amira and a new relationship with the gentleman who recorded the incident and sort of how he wants her to handle it and then sort of their dynamic. There's Amira as she tries to figure out what she wants to do. She really loves the young girl that she uh, babysits, which as I said before, is one of the best parts of the book for me. Um, this book will make you think, it will make you check your privilege at times. It will really make you understand not only some of um, have a discussion regarding racial issues in this manner, but also money issues. It think, talks about money. Um, Kylie Reed said it in a really interesting way when I saw her. It's not money so much as in dollars and cents. It's money in the sense of objects at times and also the ability to do certain things in life. So much to unpack. This is uh, Reese's uh, Reese Witherspoon's book club book pick. Also, um, if you are in a book club, I think this would be a phenomenal book to read and to discuss. So much, so much, so so good. So that's such a fun age by Kylie Reed. Okay, the next book I've already talked about actually in, um, I want to say it was in my last video, my January launch video, and that is Oligarchy by Scarlett Thompson. Tom I keep wanting to call her Scarlett Thompson. I don't know why. Scarlett Thomas. I'm sorry, Scarlett. Um, and this is out now from Counterpoint. Um, this is the story of a young Russian girl who winds up going to a boarding school in England after she is uh, introduced to her father, who she did not know was a rich, rich Russian man. He sort of sweeps her away to this boarding school. Um, we learn a couple of things. This is a discussion about boarding schools, also about the young girls in a school as they sort of deal with body image issues, sort of this obsession, the social obsession of young girls to diet the perfect body. Um, one of their schoolmates winds up dead, and there's an investigation and a discussion about why. Um, there is also this whole sort of other dynamic about as Natasha comes to understand the life that she's now leading. What does she learn about her father? There's a lot to really, really dive into in this book. Um, it is a book that I recommend reading with a buddy because as I was reading it by myself, I constantly wanted to talk about it to sort of get at what it was, what was going on. I really enjoyed it. I definitely think I would recommend it. And the back of it calls it a prime of Miss Jean Brody for the digital age. I did see that. I think there's a little bit more um, pop culture sort of to this book that, um, that d doesn't ring true to that statement, but I do think it has a lot to say. Um, so that's Oligarchy by Scarlett Thomas out from Counterpoint Books. The next book, actually, I did talk about in my last video, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now, this book on it, I can show you right here, says that it is coming out in January 2020. It turns out, after I got myself all done and did the video, that they have pushed the, the publication date for this book to March of 2020. So, preview. Um, but it is coming out. Um, My Dark Vanessa is a tale about a young woman, she's in her 20s at the start of the book, who had a relationship when she was 15 with her high school English teacher. It is a dive into her as a person as she deals with what that relationship means to her and what that relationship can be visibly seen as by other people and sort of her reaction to that. At the start of the book, the teacher has been accused of sexual misconduct by another set of girls that want her to come into, Vanessa, to come into the discussion, but Vanessa does not see herself in the same light of the, as these young ladies. This is a fantastic look, fantastic look into the mind of a young woman who doesn't really maybe know who she is. And she has defined herself by an event that um, from the outside is abuse. And from her mindset, she sees in a different way. She's an unreliable narrator. At times you're frustrated with her. At times you're super sympathetic to her. And in the end, I really just felt like this book had so much to say about such an important topic. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I thought that um, I would have issue. It's brilliantly written. It's beautifully told. It's heart-wrenching. And it just is, it's really very, very good. So this is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is coming out from William Morrow in March, okay? So they pushed the date on me. They made me look like I didn't know what I was talking about. But definitely worth your time. The next book we're going to talk about is a YA, no, YA novel, and that is Children of Blood and Bone by uh, Tommy Adeyemi, and I'm saying her name wrong. I know I am, and 
Um, this is a book that I actually listened to with my husband on numerous trips back and forth from Oregon. It was sort of our book together. So this is a Nigerian sort of African folklore YA novel where we have two different types of people, those with magic and those without. Those with magic have not been able to use magic for some time and are, are treated as a lower, lower class servant type. Our young um, main character is in, uh, and her brother and a princess from the royal ruling, cla ruling class go on a mission to restore magic to the land. I feel like there's not a lot I need to say about Children of Blood and Bone. If you are a YA reader, you've probably already read it um, or you have heard about it. The second book has been released. I see it on the shelf. Um, we really enjoyed this. This is a fun, action-packed tale about society, class, prejudice, but it's also just a fun tale about people with abilities coming into those abilities, a great book about world building. Um, it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it very, very much. Um, we're interested in what, where the story is going to go next. Um, yeah, so that's Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, and I'm saying that really wrong. I know I am. So next book that we are that I read and I almost dropped all everything is actually a graphic novel look at how beautiful this is I bought, picked this up at Powell's bookstore and this is Invisible Kingdom by G Willow Wilson and Christian Ward volume one walking the path just give you a moment I'm going to show you guys the beautiful beautiful artwork inside it is gorgeous so this is sort of the tale of two different people. We have a ship's captain who is on the run from the government body because she has found out that some of the stuff, she delivers packages and she finds out that she's actually been involved unknowing to her, in unknowingly to her and her crew in a fraudulent activity to ship money back and forth between two groups. Our other main character is this young woman here. She has joined a sect of um, religious, they're a nun group. They're, she joins a nunnery, I believe would be the right term, uh, of a religious group. She sort of throws away her culture to join this group. She feels like she's really um, passionate about joining this religion and spreading the word of this religion until she finds out that it is also involved in this um, illegal activity. And all of that comes together. It is really, really good. Now, G. Willow Wilson, she wrote the book, The Bird, what was the name of it? The Bird King that came out. She was also the author of Alfie the Unseen. She's also the writer of the new Ms. Marvel that are out that are so very, very good. I didn't know any of the other work of Christian Ward. Um, he does Black Bolt and Tommy Gun Wizards. I've never heard of that, but I will be on the lookout because I thought Invisible Kingdom was phenomenal. So this is Invisible Kingdom by G. Willow Wilson out and Christian Ward out now from, this is uh, by Berger, Bo Berger Books, which is part of the Dark Horse imprint. Okay, three more books. Actually, two graphic novels are coming, uh, are in this stack. That's pretty cool. I, for some reason, was obsessed with the cover of this book. I think it is, in some way, absolutely gorgeous. And this is Listen to the Marriage by John J. Osborne. Before I saw this book, I had never, ever heard a word about this book. But when I read the back of it, I knew that I would be interested in it. So this is the story of a marriage, a marriage on the verge of divorce told from the perspective of the couple, the husband and wife, while they are in marriage counseling. So all of the action of this book occurs in marriage counseling. And we really have three characters. We have the counselor, the husband, and the wife. And the counselor is our narrator as she interacts with the husband and wife and sees and comments on the uh, on sort of the emotional um, state that each of them are in. And as the book goes on, she comments on the growth and or lack of growth um, of the characters as they sort of try to come to terms. Now, it's this, the sort of the, the beginning of it is the husband is cheated on the wife. There's nothing new there. Um, but then the second part of it is that the wife has wanted and the desired to um, cheat on the husband as well. And sort of this dynamic, this guilt 
this anger towards each other, this lack of connection. They do have two small young children, which is a fascinating aspect as the mother has always felt as if the father was distant. And it took this sort of instant for the dad to sort of realize what he was missing and create a relationship with his children. This is sort of like being on the a fly on the wall in a therapy session over and over and over again. And I loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. I highly, highly recommend it. It's not a big book, but it is a great, great, great read. And that is Listen to the Marriage by John J. Osborne. The next book that I'm going to talk about needs no introduction, and that is um, drive the plow over the bones of the dead. And I'm not going to try to say Olga's last name. You guys know how I am with names, but she is the fantastic winner of the 2018 Nobel Prize for Literature. I have already read Flights, translated by Jennifer Croft. I loved that book. And this one is translated from the Polish by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. This was shortlisted or longlisted? Longlisted for the National Book Award for Translated Fiction. And I think it was longlisted or shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is a very different than Flights. This is the story of a woman who lives sort of in a rural part of Poland. She is sort of an enigmatic character. She's sort of a little bit off the wall, very dedicated to nature in the world. One day, one night, late at night, she gets a knock by one of her neighbors where they go over next door to find out another neighbor is dead. She has her ideas on who is killing people as they start to disappear in the community. And she has a very specific idea of why and how this is occurring. She, um, you will find, is sort of a, she's another unreliable narrator. She's creating her own narrative, really. Um, and she has all sorts of different quirky aspects to herself. She's really big into astrology. Um, her and an old student of hers um, are currently quote, uh, translating William Blake into Polish. Um, and what it is, is it's sort of her as she goes around this community as people are turning up dead. And she does her own sort of investigation into it. She's like, she's got this weird sort of idea of her place in the world. And that was a long pause. Um, I really liked this book. I did not love this book. I definitely felt like it had uh, some interest to it. I did figure it out probably in the first 25 pages. I knew how the book was going to end. Um, but I do think she's a brilliant writer. I think she's a beautiful writer. The translation is beautiful. I just don't know that this sort of pseudo murder mystery thing was my type of book, but I know why people love it. And I know a lot of people do. Um, and I definitely think I'll read everything that she writes because I do think she's one of the great writers right now. So that is Derive your plow over the bones of the dead. And I really struggle with that. Um, and there's Olga's last name for you guys. Definitely pick it up. Last but not least is a phenomenal, phenomenal graphic novel that is coming out in March of 2020. I have a pre-copy and that is Glass Town, The Imaginary, Imaginary World of the Brontes by Isabel Greenberg. Now, Isabel Greenberg wrote two of my favorite, absolute favorite graphic novels, and that is um, The Encyclopedia of er Early Earth. And what's the other one called? Once Upon a Hundred Nights. Let me try to get you um, The One Hundred Nights of Hero. There it is. Both of those, <coughs> excuse me, out already, worth every minute of your time. This is coming out in March. This is a take on the Bronte children, um, uh, Charlotte, um, Emily, and, and also their brother, Bronwyn, based upon an idea that, or actually on real uh, sort of stories that they wrote together when they were younger of these imaginary worlds, and one of them was called Glasstown. What Isabel has done is she's invented a whole entire discussion regarding their lives around this imaginary world and characters from that imaginary world that pop into sort of this narrative, and they talk to Charlotte, and also sort of have a conversation about who they are. Um, and there's an adventure within the book that the, the children are writing together. It is so good, it's so entertaining. I'll show you the art. This is a non-colored version, so you guys are only gonna see the black and white art right now. 
but I, this book could be in black and white and it would be just as fantastic in, as it would be in color. I, I loved it. If you like the Brontes, it will inspire you to go pick up any of their novels. It will inspire you that sometimes um, we just need to escape into another world that we create in our own head. I think it's really, really good. It's going, I'm going to get a copy of it and I'm going to add it to my Isabel Greenberg collection because I think she is brilliant. So that is Glass Town, the imaginary, imaginary world of the Brontes by Isabel Greenberg. I don't know why I'm tripping on that word. And it is so, so good. So let me see if I can get these into a nice, neat pile for you guys. A lot of really amazing books here, you guys. I hope all of these, there you go, wind up on your TBR. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, I hope you like this video and you come back for more. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye!